Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Julian Richards from the Morgan Stanley U.S. Economics Team. And I'm Marcus Guccio from the European Economics Team. On this special episode of the podcast, we'll focus on the issue of labor force participation across developed markets and its broader economic implications. It's Thursday, November 3rd at 10 a.m. in New York. And 3 p.m. in London. It's no secret that the COVID pandemic profoundly disrupted labor markets across the globe. Labor shortages, rather than unemployment, have now become the key challenge to economies everywhere, and the Great Resignation has become a catchphrase. In the UK and US, in particular, are experiencing a slow recovery in labor participation post-COVID, which is adding to an already complex set of policy trade-offs by the Fed and the Bank of England. At the same time, Europe looks like a bright spot. So, Julian, nobody wants to work anymore has become a punchline. What kind of picture do the data on labor supply really paint in the US? In the U.S. at least, we have seen a massive decline in labor force participation at the onset of the pandemic and really an incomplete recovery so far. Less immigration and more retirements have been major contributors to that drop initially. But since then, it also is that prime age workers, so workers age 25 to 54, have been slow to come back. Now, in contrast to the U.S., I think your analysis shows that labor supply in the euro area has already fully recovered to pre-pandemic levels. What drove that faster rebound and what's your outlook for the euro area from here? Can we learn something about what this may mean for other countries? We've seen a remarkably quick bounce back in the labor market in the euro area after the pandemic recession, with participation already one percentage point above pre-pandemic levels by mid-22 and also about the level implied by pre-crisis trends. We think that furlough schemes kept workers in the jobs during COVID were a key supporting factor here. We don't expect a return to pre-crisis labor supply growth, however, with increasing headwinds from immigration and demographics increasingly a factor in the euro area. The UK had a similarly generous furlough scheme, but dynamics are in many ways more similar to the US, with participation almost one percentage point below 4Q19 levels in the middle of 2022. Post-Brexit migration flows are one obvious reasons, but we also point to a record number of workers out of the labor force due to health reasons. But let me turn back to the US. What makes the US labor market so challenging right now? And how would a potential rise in labor supply affect the economic growth outlook and the Fed's monetary policy? Well, really, the US labor market has just remained extremely resilient, even though the overall economy has clearly slowed. The U.S. economy is also now producing a lot more output with about the same amount of workers as we did before the pandemic. So structurally, labor demand is still high. At the same time, a lot of the losses in participation among older workers will not reverse. But prime age workers have been coming back and there is still more room for them to go. So prime age labor force participation should be increasing and that will be key for some relaxation in the labor market. For the Fed, that's key, right? Removing pressure from the labor market is very important to feel more confident about the inflation outlook. Wage growth has been extremely high because there still is a pretty significant shortage of workers and workers are quitting at high rates to go to higher paying jobs. Now, as the economy slows more and labor demand begins to cool, that should lessen. But really getting more people into the labor force is just going to be key to see wage growth moderate and the unemployment rate go up for good reasons and not for job cuts. So an expansion in labor supply, in particular if it's coming from more prime age workers, is really key to manage the soft landing the Fed's looking for. Marcus, how about the ECB and the Bank of England? Maybe walk us through the thinking there and give us a sense of the outlook for the UK and the euro area into 2023. So the ECB is facing a different set of issues altogether. Labor market supply is closely monitored, but with wage growth really rather modest to date, despite record low unemployment, much less of a focus for monetary policy. Instead, with rates still arguably in stimulating territory, the near-term focus continues to be on policy normalization, eventually also QT, while fending off concerns about fragmentation. The picture for the Bank of England is somewhat more similar to the one faced by the Fed. The more labor supply bounces back, the less the Bank of England has to lean against and demand. With the recession ahead and a bearish outlook on participation, most of the slackening will likely be done via the demand channel, however. Marcus, thanks for taking the time to talk. Great speaking to Julian. And thanks for listening. If you enjoy Thoughts on the Market, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and share the podcast with a friend or colleague today. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you. 